Today's scripture comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 133, verses 1 and through 3. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the color, color of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. But there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come before you, we empty our hearts and minds, we fill by love, grace, and word. So speak to our hearts, because we need your voice. And I pray, may the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your eyes, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Last week, after 40 days of busy Lenten season, my family and I, we had a three-day vacation up in Tahoe with a good friend of mine, Joseph, another pastor whom I work with in Berkeley Korean United Methodist Church. I was worried at first because it could make each other uncomfortable, you know, sharing a space and resources, especially during pandemic. It's difficult and challenging. That's why in your countries and communities, even families are in conflict with one another because of limited resources like oil, land, mineral, and even love. Furthermore, second, I had a bad memory of uh, going to Tahoe. In my first trip to Tahoe years ago, my wife and I, we had a uh, biggest and fiercest fight ever in our marriage history. What if I do something stupid again and get into fight again? Third, can my kids, Luke and Edie, have a three and a half hour drive to Tahoe? which is the longest road trip ever so far. I was nervous in many ways. But in the end, everything turned out okay. Better than I expected. Actually, at least my family enjoyed every part of it. Phoebe slept more than the half time on the Lord and loved to listen to Baby Shock. Remember, you know, Baby Shock songs like children's songs like Baby Shock, Baby Shock. I said last Sunday, by the way, I don't like them anymore after watching you know, my octopus teacher and seeing sharks attacking uh, the octopus. I take it back because that song makes my life easier or childcare easier. Look, on the other hand, he didn't sleep at all. Three and a half hour drive on the way to town because he was so excited. He was super excited to ride Pastor Joseph's new SUV. Furthermore, they enjoyed Play with, playing with him inside the vacation house we stayed and out in the beach in town. So for me, there was no driving, no childcare, no yelling, no bad memories. It couldn't get better than that. Sharing the place and spending time together with my family and with a good friend of mine. Pastor Joseph, he said he enjoyed it, uh, enjoyed the vacation. I hope he met it <laughs> because I did, my family did. We fully enjoyed the trip. By the way, God bless his heart. <laughs> Today's text, Psalm 
133 is like going up to Tahoe with joy and expectation because it is a song of ascent. Quote unquote, a song for going up to a high place. Since Jerusalem is elevated 2,474 feet from the sea level, and especially the temple, it's located where? On the mountain, right? On Mount Jai. So when one goes to the temple to worship there, wherever you know he or she comes from, comes from, from both south, west, or east, it doesn't matter. He or she should literally go up to worship. And that has a symbolic meaning as Nancy Coester, professor of Old Testament at Augsburg College in Minneapolis, Minnesota, says, quote, In this exalted place, the highest act was to worship God. End quote. Since the temple is the place where people gather, appreciate God's blessings in their lives, and enjoy each other's presence in worshiping together, the psalm begins with this, how very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. So there is unity, but there's more. Verse 2, it says, It is like the precious oil on the head, running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the color of his robes. So what is there? You know what is there? There is abundance. Like precious oil running down over the head, over the beard, and over the color of wolves. There is no regret, but joy in waste. So the first point I, point I want to share with you today is this. Waste in love is never wasted. The oil here is, according to Professor Coester, called the fragrant, refreshing oil used to consecrate a priest, end quote. That's why in ordination, even today, the pastors are ordained with what? With hands and oil. Not only that, in antiquity, a host anointed a guest before the meal, which is a sign of welcome. Just as in John's Gospel, Mary, Nazareth's sister, she poured precious perfume on oil on Jesus' feet. Remember? It was done so lavishly that Judas, who later betrayed Jesus, he said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? She poured the whole thing. <laughs> Nothing was left. The point, however, is not waste, but abundance. The point is not how much it will cost, but how sincere and how true she, her heart was. That's why women, after Jesus was dead and buried, came to his tomb to anoint his body with oil and spices, which were precious and expensive commodity at the time. When they are ready to waste on Jesus' dead body, the ready to waste precious thing on Jesus' dead body, what do they see? Resurrection. So commenting on Easter, Professor Esther says, quote, Life is no longer scarce, but abundant, no longer lesioned, but spilling over like an endless fountain. End quote. So when we give and love, 
my friends, let us do that lavishly. Because nothing done in and through love will be wasted, but will be remembered and appreciated. Up in Tahoe, we brought our food, so we didn't, we didn't need to eat out and could save money. But one time, Pastor Joseph, he, he picked up and brought a lunch from a Thai restaurant nearby. And when we opened those boxes, our jaws were dropped open because there was so much food. Ta you know, pad thai, green curry, egg rolls, and salads, you name it. It's, there was abundance of food. So we couldn't finish it. We had to eat them for dinner. And even then, we had to throw away some leftovers when we left the place. It sounds like a waste, right? But not in my mind. Not in my mind. His willingness to share is still here in my heart. Nothing done in love will be wasted. Now, let me ask, who is the expert in giving and loving so lavishly? It is our God. Therefore, the second point is this. God loves us abundantly and holds nothing back. There is another wicked in today's text along with oil. That is, dew, D-E-U, you know, water. Verse 3 says, it is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. But there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. Mount Hermon is located 111 miles to the north of Jerusalem, about three hour drive. But much like Tahoe, it, it has heavy rainfall and snow in one winter, you know, which is its rainy season, just like California. And Professor Coester says, quote, The melting snow, or dew, flowed down into the valley. It fed the Jordan River and reached as far as the oasis of Jericho. In arid count, in a country, in dry country, where the rain is scarce and the rivers dry up, the land and the people depend on water that comes from a distant source. It is the scarcity of water in the dry lands which makes Mount Hermon's dew so precious." And good. When I was on the way to Tao, I didn't expect to see snow, by the way, because it's April. So my wife and I, we bought a swimsuit for Phoebe. <laughs> But when I got there, the snow was everywhere. <laughs> and I thought to myself, what, a, what, what was I thinking? And one time, I wanted to take, a, take pictures of me and look, you know, holding hands together and walking, you know, on, in, in the water, right, in the beach. So I took off of my shop, you know, my, my socks, and put my feet in the water, and, and, and I stayed how long? Less than five seconds. It was so cold. Going here and there, around Tahoe, I saw waters coming down, you know, making waterfalls here and there, and flowing through the valleys and creeks. That, that water, you know, from the snow planting snow, but it didn't like waste at all. You know, we say in California, whether we will have uh, water shortage in the summer or not, it depends on how much snow we get in winter during the rainy season. Where? Up in Tao, right? And we know no matter how high it is, 
stone and water, they will come down and eventually give life to those who need it. Whether it's plant or animals, like including humans. And it's much like us love, my friends. Like water, there is no boundary. Whether we are young or old, rich or poor, colored or non-colored, God holds nothing bad in His love. Psalm 133 begins how very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. And it sounds like families and relatives living together, not neighbors and friends. But Hebrew word, Hebrew word here, ach, or in pro, akhen, means more than our kin, our kindred. It means brothers, brethren, or countrymen. So it refers to those who worship God together, as we do every Sunday here at Grace. Just like water, God's love has no bound. There is no scarcity, no reservation or calculation in God's grace and love. That is why today's first reading from lectionary, the text from the Acts of the Apostles, describes utopia where believers share everything in common. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. There were one in Christ, there was no boundary in sharing, and there was abundance because their hearts were full of love. After coming home and looking back, I thought to myself, what if, what if I was holding back something during the vacation, you know, sharing space, sharing food and time with my friend? What if Pastor Joseph was holding back and not willing to share his brand new SUV with my family, especially with my kids, because when you put two little kids in your car, you know what's going to happen, right? It, it was a brand new car. It, it, but if I hesitated, what if he, you know, he was holding back, then it wouldn't have been so enjoy, enjoyable, right? Truly, joy comes from generosity, from what seems to be a waste. But we know, waste in love will never be wasted but it will be remembered and appreciated. I think that's why God gave us His one and only Son on the cross, His priceless and precious pearl. He gave it to us. But we know it's not a waste. Now, He is calling us to share that abundant love with our brothers and sisters so lavishly because we know there is joy and also promise in giving, in sharing, and in wasting in love. But there, the Lord ordained His blessing, life forevermore. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, like oil flowing from hand, to beard and to the color of the loaves, like dew reaching far away and giving life to those who need it. Your love sustains and strengthens our body and soul. Grant us great generous hearts so to give and share, even to waste in love, just as you you help you held nothing back from us in giving your son to us. Give us courage to do so and allow us to experience New life, resurrection, and life in your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.